you are taking a survey that asks you questions about how much you like your job. But in the midst of those questions is an item that asks you about how much you dislike your job. It is the opposite of those other questions. That is called a reverse worded question. And in IBM SPSS statistics software, that kind of question needs to be reverse scored before you can use it. We are going to dive deeper into how to reverse score items in SPSS. Why do we use reverse worded questions? Test developers know that if we ask questions that are all positive, we can get what is called a halo effect. The halo effect occurs when survey takers consistently rate items at the extreme high end of the scale. Like this evaluation of Dr. Jeffrey Tobin's presentation about universal learning. The consistently high scores, which really reflect the overall satisfaction with the presentation, inflate the estimation of how you actually feel about any particular item, making each one less useful for determining how much people actually think this presentation will apply to their job. Now the halo effect feels great if you're the presenter, but it's problematic for the researcher. You might as well just use one item. This presentation was great, right? Because every item is rated exactly the same as every other item. There is no variability between items. So to keep people on their toes, several items will be reverse worded. We might ask how much you agree with the statement, I feel a sense of pride in doing my job. And then later ask you how much you agree with the statement, I sometimes feel my job is meaningless. Now we expect that people who strongly agree that they feel a sense of pride in their job would strongly disagree that their job is meaningless. All of the items are coded initially as six equals strongly agree and one equals strongly disagree. But for the reverse worded items, we want to reverse the score. So that one equals strongly agree and six equals strongly disagree. Here's how we do that in SPSS. For this example, we are going to use a subset of data from the Job Satisfaction Survey created by Dr. Paul Spector from the University of South Florida. Now, this is a widely used measure of job satisfaction that comprises nine facet subscales. Now, each facet is based on four items, so 36 items total. And the theory is that these nine facets are the construct of job satisfaction. And therefore, your total score on all of these facets represents your overall job satisfaction. Each of the items is scored on a Likert scale from one to six, in which high scores on the scale represent job satisfaction and low scores on the scale represent job dissatisfaction. However, each of these facets includes negatively worded items. So for example, the satisfaction with pay subscale includes an item that says, I feel unappreciated by the organization when I think about how much they pay me. Now this item is the opposite of satisfaction with pay, but it can still be used in the scale if we reverse score it. Here is what Dr. Spector says about items like this. A score of six, representing strongest agreement with a negatively worded item, is considered equivalent to a score of one, representing strongest disagreement on a positively worded item. So if you strongly agree with a negative item, it's the same as if you strongly disagree with a positive item, allowing them to be combined meaningfully. We are going to focus on just two of the subscales, satisfaction with pay and satisfaction with the nature of work. In other words, do you have a sense of personal satisfaction from the job that you do? Is your work meaningful? And of course, you could feel that your work is meaningful, but still also feel that you are underpaid. So these facets are independent of one another. 
you can score high on one and low on the other. When we look at the scoring rubric for these scales, we see that there are two negatively worded items in the satisfaction with pay subscale, indicated in orange, and one negatively worded item in the satisfaction with the nature of the job subscale. I am using a simplified data set called jobsatreverse.sav with 429 cases based on actual responses. The first way to reverse score a variable is to use the recode into different variables function. Now this method works best for small or moderate numbers of variables. It allows you to easily add labels and it preserves the original variables. So from the drop down menu, choose transform, recode into different variables. Right click and display variable names. Now move the three reversed items into the box. Items eight, 10, and 19. Each variable must be renamed because we are recoding into different or new variables. The name of the new variable should be the same as the original name followed by a small letter R for reversed. This will show you at a glance that you are looking at a reversed version of the original variable. Do this for each item. Although optional, I recommend that each variable also have a variable label. The most effective variable labels are the text of the actual item from the survey. So for example, item eight says, I sometimes feel my job is meaningless. That item text is going to become my variable label. And I follow each label with another small letter R. Adding that letter R will save you immense frustration later because you will never have to wonder if the data set that you are looking at has already been reverse scored or not. Trust me on this, you will thank me later. Now that the variable names and labels have been created, we will reverse score the item. Click on old and new values. Our items were scored on a scale of one to six. Each old value of one will become six. Number two becomes five. After each change, be sure to click on the add button or you will receive an error message telling you to do so. Keep going until you have six equals one. Well, this raises a question. When your scale has an odd number of response options, then the middle score, in this case a three, will stay the same. What should you do when you recode? I recommend always including the middle score in your recoding scheme. It ensures that you do not accidentally miss a score and I've had problems with scores being dropped when I did not include that three equals three. Now that all of our items are reversed, click continue and then okay. The new and different variables are added to the bottom of the variable list. I prefer to replace the original items with our new reversed scored variables, and then I'll move the originals to the bottom. To further clean up this data set, I would recommend not deleting the original variables, but hiding them using variable sets. See my video on using variable sets for how to do that. If you do not need to keep the original variables, you can do essentially the same thing using the recode into same variables function for reverse scoring. You would start by renaming each variable, adding a lowercase r to the ones that will be reversed. Then you should add the dash r to each label. If you do this, however, you lose the original variable so make sure that this is what you really want to do. After that, the process is the same as recoding into the same variable. For each value, 
recode it into the corresponding new value. And when you are done, click Continue and OK. The second way to reverse score a variable in SPSS is to use a compute variable function. With this technique, you have to recode one variable at a time, but you can still add variable labels as you go. We are going to create a formula, and to do this, we need to know the number of response items. Remember that all of the items are coded on a Likert scale as 6 equals strongly agree and 1 equals strongly disagree. There are 6 response items, so now add 1. 6 plus 1 equals 7. We will use the formula 7 minus x to reverse each variable. Let me show you how. From the drop-down menu, choose Transform Compute Variable. Name the new variable JSS underscore 8R. For the formula, type 7 minus JSS underscore 8, or you can double click to move the variable into this box. Click on Type and Label, and add the label, I sometimes feel my job is meaningless, dash R. Click Continue and OK. The new variables are created in the dataset. The third way to reverse score a variable is to use syntax. Now this can actually be faster when you are reverse scoring a large number of variables because you can use a lot of cut and paste. So for each variable, start with the command compute, followed by the name of the new variable, which will be the name of the original variable plus a lowercase r, indicating that it has been reversed. The formula to compute this variable is 7 minus JSS8, which is the original score on the variable. Now then add the variable labels. This is the name of the new variable, GSS8R, followed by the actual item text from the survey. It's in single quotes, although double quotes will work. And then execute, always followed by a period. Using the syntax for all variables, I select all and then run. The new variables are created in the dataset. Using syntax is handy when you will be working with various datasets that use the same survey and naming convention.